On the phone, we have the newest member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, former Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneer and Florida State Seminole, Derek Brooks. How are you doing today, Derek? I'm doing fine. How about you? Great. The weather's a little better down there in Florida than it is here in Chicago. <laughs> it's definitely a lot warmer uh, down on this end, but, uh, you know, that's, I guess, one of the advantages you're having living in the southern part of the country. <laughs> I see that you grew up in uh, at uh, in Florida. Was Florida State your primary choice for college, or were you looking at other colleges back then? No, Florida State was, uh, you know, my primary uh, college choice, and you know, I actually chose Florida. I chose Florida State uh, off proximity. To be honest with you, when I was being recruited, man, some of these colleges were starting to sound the same, and. I said, hey, no matter where I go, I'm going to get a good education. So <laughs> I was laying down one day, and I said, man, what if something happened to me? You know, my parents, they need to get to me. So the closest university to Pensacola, Florida, was Florida State, and that's why I ended up doing <laughs> to go to Florida State. So you had no interest in going to the U? Uh, you know what? I, I, they were on my list to visit, but as I said, at the end of the day, <laughs> when it boiled down to it, you know, Miami was 10, 11 hours away. <laughs> so Florida State was only two hours and 10 minutes. So that's what I brought my decision down to. Uh, when I tell people that story, uh, a lot of them can't believe it. Like, well, it must have been the coach. It was there. So with that, I said, they were obviously a part of it. But my fundamental decision was based on proximity. What was Bobby Bowden like to play for? Uh, awesome. You talking about. Uh, knowing the, the foundational principles to live your life with a faith-based coach uh, in an industry of college football for, man, 50-plus years is amazing. So he set the tone and having a chance to play for Mickey Andrews uh, defensively, uh, developing that mental toughness that I had today was awesome. And you know, I had fun there. You know, some Wally Brown and Jim Gladden, uh, I really enjoy uh, my time at Florida State with all the coaches. And then you won a national championship there when you beat Nebraska. That wasn't bad either, was it? <laughs> that, that's, that's another – yeah, again, that was another thing that I embraced when I was there, to be on the team that bring Coach Bowden his first national championship after being close for so many years. To finally be that team to say, hey, we did it. Uh, for Coach Bowden, we were part of his first. All those things are important to me. And I was blessed to, obviously, to win it, to be a part of it. And, and again, I can honestly say that hey, we were the first in 1993 to, to bring Coach Bowden the championship. You didn't make it easy, though. I mean, Nebraska was leading most of that game. You know, very much so like, you know, all the game this year. You know, we were heavy favorites back, you know, in 93 against a team that most said, hey, they're going to blow them out. But we knew uh, it was going to be a lot tougher game than what people were projecting. And the Brass was a tough opponent. And, and again, we we made the final plays down the stretch to win. But we knew going in how tough this game was going to be. And we didn't take Nebraska, Nebraska lightly at all. Were you scared any time during that game thinking, you know what? I don't think we're going to be able to come back in this game. No, nah, I never enter a game that way. Uh, even during a game. You know, I played to win, and at no point did I doubt that we were going to win that game. When you got drafted by the Buccaneers, did you expect to get drafted in the bottom of the first round, or did you think you were going to go higher that year? Uh, you know, without a 28 best player, no. <laughs> in my mind. You know, and, you know, obviously uh, I was expecting the best. Uh, but, you know, as I said before, you know, and I say today, you know, I just want an opportunity to play and go and improve myself. And, you know, I thank, thank God that the Bucks moved back into the first round uh, to get me at number 28 and, you know, really was instrumental in my career being played entirely here in the state of Florida. I'm grateful for that. But uh, at that time, I was just, you know, thankful that I had got drafted. I, I wasn't a guy that was bitter, <laughs> saying I should have been the, 
remember this pick or that pick. I just felt, hey, I was drafted where I was meant to be drafted and um, embrace the opportunity that was before me. What was Coach Dungey like to play for? Yeah, he was tough. <laughs> he coached us defensively, man. He coached us tough. But, yeah, it was fun. He brought disciplineship, consistency, and a way of doing business that changed the culture. And the fact that he came in talking about changing our community and making us all winners uh, just as much as we won games on the field so we all could win was extremely important and setting the tone for my attitude towards making a difference in the community. Because, I mean, Tampa was not known as a winning football program. They had a couple of good years with Doug Williams, but other than that, they were always at the bottom. Yeah, but that's, that's the intriguing part of the position that we were in to turn this franchise around. And, again, that's, uh, as I can say now, that was part of my Hall of Fame resume. Who ran that defense? Did Dun Tony Dungey run or was it the coordinator? No, nah, you know, the defense architect was uh, actually Chuck Nolan. And Coach Dungey obviously put his principles on it and installed it, you know, and brought it to Monty Kiffin. You know, Monty Kiffin and Coach Dungey worked together before, but uh, I like to think it was obviously the head coach's influence and, you know, he trusted his coaches to get the teaching over to the players. Like you said, he learned under Chuck Knoll, and it was a Chuck Knoll type of defense. Yeah, and again, I you know just here when Coach Dungey talk about the, his Tampa defenses, he always give credit back to Chuck, Chuck Knoll and what uh, those Steeler defenses were able to do. And obviously, he changed things up depending on our talent level that we had in Tampa. But as far as I know, uh, it dates back to Chuck Knoll when you talk about some of the principles that Coach Dungey ran here defensively for us. Who was the leader of the defense uh, playing out there? Was it you? Was it Warren Sapp? Was it John Lynch or Harvey Nickerson? You had so many great players. Well, each position had its own leadership within its position, you know, and and at times, uh, you know, it's different leaders speak up. But uh, you know, generally, our teammates looked at me as, you know, hey, well, who was a leader? Then I stepped up and embraced that role. But I was the type of leader, man, that the stage was big enough for everybody to shine. So each position had its own leadership, and uh, I like to think we did it together, to be honest with you. It had to be tough to get Warren Sapp to keep quiet because he likes to talk. Uh, like I said before, <laughs> man, you got to be comfortable in your own skin so everybody else could be who they are. And we had that interesting dynamic, and and I said before, it worked for us here in Tampa. Who was the toughest guy you went up against? Uh, not really one guy. <laughs> you know, it was. I had my battles, man, with all my opponents, and it was. A, you know, I looked at tough battles as an opportunity to shine. I embraced the the joy in it. You know, if it wasn't going, if it wasn't going against the likes of Marcia Falk and Barry Sanders, then you know how could. I stepped my game up. So my going against my opponents, actually, I, I used that as motivation to bring out the best. Was it hard that you never put up real big sack numbers other than that one year? I mean, because everybody thinks of, like, the Lawrence no. Taylor type as a linebacker getting sacks. Uh, my stats every year was pretty good, to be honest. You know, as far as I see, uh, I wasn't asked to go sack the quarterback, so that's why I don't have a lot of sacks. But like you said, you could do it all. I mean, you got interceptions. You could cover the running backs, tackle. You weren't just one. You weren't just a sack I like to think of my, Yeah, I like to uh, think, to think I had a complete game. And, you know, whatever the defense asked me to do, I believe I had the skill set to do it. Who did you model your game after? Any player? No. I, I modeled after myself. I try to. Really study myself and get better every single year. Uh, stay in the moment was my playing model, my playing motto, and still is today. So it was, uh, yeah, you had the likes, obviously, of Junior Seau that was when I first came in the league for the 4 3 linebacker goal. Uh, you looked at him when did Hardy Nickerson, who was on my team, uh, set a standard at our position. But at the end of the day, I wanted to, you know, make my game my game and just try to, you know, 
get better every year. Do you think 2002 was your best season when you were the player of the year? Uh, I like to celebrate 2002 because when I received the individual award of being the best defensive player, we won the championship. So that's why it's special to me. And you had that interception return for a touchdown in the Super Bowl, which had to be nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some say a, a game catch and play. I was grateful I was able to see it, catch it, run, and don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> How gratifying was it winning that Super Bowl? Say it again? How gratifying was it winning that Super Bowl against the Raiders? I think it was a validation for Tampa Bay in our Tampa Bay area. Go from 0-26 when we first started to Super Bowl champions years later. And I think it was a culmination of a lot of hard work and a lot of disappointments and, and obviously a lot of joys. So I think our Bay Area celebrated that championship because that's how much it meant to our cities. Did you guys kind of feel bad that Tony Dungy didn't get a chance to win that Super Bowl with you guys? I feel bad every year we lost in the playoffs and didn't go further. <laughs> so, uh, again, Coach Gruden came. He brought a different dynamic to our football team. And obviously that dynamic uh, on our team helped us win the championship. But, you know, we, at the time, you know, we were blessed with the challenge of looking forward, not backwards. And I think Coach Dungy went on to have a pretty good career out to Tampa. <laughs> he won that Super Bowl with the Colts, which is very nice. Exactly. The thing I feel bad about, though, is like you said, you guys were 0-26 when the Buccaneers started, and a guy like Leroy Salmon didn't get a chance to play in a Super Bowl. Yeah, it was... Uh, you know, that's part of our history, you know, is overcoming those type moments. Uh, everybody that played the game don't get a chance to do it. And that's playing a Super Bowl. Uh, you got Hall of Fame players that never played in a Super Bowl. So you just understand how special that opportunity is. Then you win it, it gets even more special. Was there a play that stood out as your basically your favorite play in your career? Uh, no, uh, I try to appreciate all the plays I made, man, in its own individuality. Uh, you know, obviously some plays meant more in, ga in the game than others, and you tend to gravitate towards those, and, you know, and I do that as well, but I try to appreciate them all. You know, I was blessed to play a lot of football in this league, and I don't want to take any play that I made or, or didn't make for granted. How did you know when it was time to retire? Uh, I just did. You know, I was got some calls out that I got released from the Bucks and, you know, was trying to wait on the right situation for Derek. And there were some situations that came close, but never one that I felt comfortable in accepting uh, in, as a total package. And so uh, I started to really work on more transition things than I did when it comes to playing. And it kind of, the process kind of took care of itself for me. It wasn't really a one moment or one day it was just kind of things added up over time when I started transitioning into life after football and before I know it it was I was full resume written no regrets time to move on I mean you were in 11 Pro Bowls nine time all pro but I think one of your best awards was that Walter Payton Man of the Year award yes and that that's recognizes the work of a lot of people behind the scenes you talk about changing the community uh, making life better for people. And, you know, I'm just grateful that, you know, the first year that they renamed this award after Walter Payton, you know, I was one of the co recipients. And, you know, that's life's work. That's where I feel this game gives you this platform to make a difference. And I thank God that I was able to do it. How did you feel when you got the call saying that you made the Hall of Fame? I was joyous ecstatic and uh, emotional all in one. Sometimes you, you get emotions that you can't describe, and that was one of those moments. We you got made... two more questions that I have to run. No problem. I saw you on TV with the other six Hall of Famers. Some of these guys had to wait 20 years, like Ray Guy and Claude Humphrey. Do you think it's more rewarding to have to wait or going in the first time? You know what? That, that's not for me to judge. Uh, I'm blessed. And I was a first bowser. At the same time, 
I'm blessed that I get a chance to be a part of history with a great guy, being the only full-time partner going into this game. You know, I mean, she's in this game going into the Hall of Fame. Claude Humphrey, one of the best defensive ends of his era, and seeing how appreciative he is to say, look, he's in with me, you know, all the years. Doesn't matter. The fact is he's going into football the more times in 2014. I get a chance to share that with him. So uh, it's not for me to judge. It's, it's, it's for the process. It's for me to appreciate. Uh, I was a part of the 2014 class, and God blessed me to be a part of it with these guys, and I'm accept my role in it. Who's going to be your presenter? Still working on it. I want to. You know, all the folks are told all the Tampa. Everybody can present me. <laughs> but I got some time to decide that. But uh, I want my kids uh, to be much a part of this process as possible.